I'm going to show you, it's not very sophisticated, but how I make these marks and you'll see how effective this is. So mistakes that I see on my painting. So I think my mouth needs to move to the right. So I mark a little bit with light charcoal to move it. And then I mark a little bit with dark charcoal from the other direction. See, that's a mark with charcoal. That's super like non-committal. If I wanted to move it now, the white charcoal is not really catching as well as the dark. So maybe the white is not gonna be as useful on this paper. Of course, the surface really matters a lot when you're doing this kind of thing. But see, now I have this mark over here. And if I don't get to here today, that's all right. I don't have like a mark that's gonna dry on my painting and, and, and cause distress. I can erase this with an eraser at any moment. So super, super useful. Now, I'm looking at this hairdress thing and I noticed that I have something going quite like wrong somewhere here. Like I'm thinking that this might be too high because as I'm looking closer at this, I noticed that this kind of connects to that, that I didn't really notice. And then, you know, goes up over here. So this whole thing, like on this side, needs to come up. So I'm marking it with the light charcoal. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Here it works really nicely. So the white charcoal catches better when I don't have texture. Here I have some paint texture and it doesn't catch, but here I have much less. So it catches nicely. So I get this diagonal to, to like I'm marking it in. And as soon as I put paint on it, it's going to be super like easy to remove it. And then the consequence of this is that the hairline here needs to come up because this needs to be thin, right? So this needs to move. So I'm marking it. All right. And then I'm marking this, that this needs to move. And you see, it's, it, the marks that are being made feel kind of natural to the painting. Like it's not, it's not um, obstructing the flow. It's just like, oh, okay, here are some marks that we can follow later. And I, I do this extremely frequently this is so so useful because if i wanted to make these marks now with mm -hmm. oil like think what a mess that would create like i'll be putting what would i be putting them with like lines in raw umber like that's a complete mess right and i don't want in order to fix my drawing to have to mix this color and 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 this. like it becomes impossible because once we bring the painting to a point that it has so many colors that you have to mix to make every movement happen. Uh, it just takes too long and is really, really clumsy. So when a painting progresses as far as, as, as our paintings have progressed, charcoal becomes a much more useful tool for correcting drawing mistakes uh, than oil, just because you're not obligated to mix a huge amount of colors in order to make these movements happen. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, because imagine, like, I'm, I'm fixing this and this and that and that and that, and I would have to, like, this would have taken me, like, two hours, like, the whole lesson to try to correct these mistakes if I had to actually mix accurately all of these colors. So this allows me to, to get my agenda items marked and corrected before I even go and ask myself, what colors do I need to mix? See that? So I made a lot of corrections. And it was kind of, kind of easy, you know? So this is, this is all about how to make this thing as easy as we can. And the charcoal comes in super handy here. Make sense? Yep. Good. Just so, to... Yes, just to. Um, you're using the black when what you're, you're using the black or the white based on how how little it will no no, no 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 i'm using the white and the black depending on on whether or not i need to move a dark shape or a light shape right so here on top of this right i need the background oops i need the background to bite into the head so if i make that mark with a light it's going to look like i'm expanding the head right so yeah. I'm, I'm using the i'm using the dark whenever a shadow needs to grow and I'm using the light whenever a light shape needs to grow. So it's, it's just guided by the values, nothing, nothing, nothing else. 
So what I want you to do is prepare to do this next time, right? So next time your painting is gonna probably be at a place where making some marks with charcoal uh, is gonna be beneficial. So do you have any? Yes, I do. Really? Do you have charcoal sticks uh, that are willow? Yes, I do. That is great. So maybe we'll even use them now. When you look at your painting, do you identify ag agenda items such as what I'm identifying on mine? Things that need to move? Yes. What well, the, are those? The very first thing is, I don't know what I did here, but I made a blob all along this hairline. What do you mean a blob? It looks good to me. What, what's wrong with it? You can see, can you see this dark line? That I can, yes, yes, yes. But uh, doesn't, it, doesn't it signify like the, the contour of where the um, head meets this hairdress? Is that not what's going on there? Yeah, but it's not blended. So it looks like it's a, uh, mm. maybe you can't tell from, but it, so it looks like it's, uh, it's the hairline coming down. I see, the, I see, I see, I see. So basically. <laughs> I was, what I was trying to do it was, get in, was get some orange in there, but I ended up, I don't know, darkening the whole thing too much. I see, I, I see, I see. So in, in, so in operational terms, the light green color of this area of the forehead needs to come to the right. If yes. I'm understanding you correctly. Good. So that's something that you would mix with, that you could mark with the white chalk. So do you want to try to do that? Okay. Now, there's two techniques that I want to kind of go over today. So we'll kind of see if we can get to both, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how we do. Because the, the thing about these two techniques is that they're, they're a little contradictory. It's like either you do that or the other. So maybe in some areas of the painting we'll use one and in the other areas of the painting we'll use the other. So do I wanna, do I wanna white out this whole thing? That no, I... no, 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 you just like, you just wanna mark it very, very lightly. This is, this is a way I'm for just you letting, to- I'm just yeah. letting myself know. Exactly, you're letting yourself know you're, and, and you can kind of do this, you know what I, cause I've done the same thing in this area. Give it a very light, kind of indication to, to almost um, ever so slightly erase the dark mark that's bugging you. Uh, and that would give you some kind of visual indication of how it's gonna look like once you fix it. But, you know, it, it gives you the cue so that you can say, yeah, you know, I really do wanna do that. Because it's hard to judge what you wanna do at some point before like seeing some kind of visual cue, like, yeah, that does look better, you know what I mean? Yeah. So for example, yeah, exactly. So as you're working with it now, I'm noticing that you are, you're evaluating this angle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, good. that's a good thing to do too. Like evaluate if this needs to go down just a little bit. You could mark it with the light shock, like I'm going to do here, right? Because I have to evaluate this. So, so the bottom of my face, you know, I'm suspicious uh, that it may, it may be too narrow. So I'm going to lightly make a mark here with the white chalk. You see what I'm doing? I'm checking to see if it looks better this way. If it doesn't, I'm going to just erase it. See that? So uh -huh. This is a risk-free way to play with the geometry of your painting. So useful because if I just put this here in wet paint, it's, it's risk, it's, it's risk heavy, you know, like now I got to commit, you know, I've, I've made a move on my painting, but this way, it just lets me kind of be uh, like investigating this, this stuff, you know? Uh -huh. feels, like, feels like cheating. Doesn't it, right? It's good though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, it feel, if it feels like cheating, then that means we're onto a hack. So that's, that's so, so useful. Like I can tell you that when I'm, when I'm working on a commission, that's how every day starts. You know, I take my charcoal and my white chalk, and I just make marks. Like I plan ahead all the things that I want to move, all the things that I want to change. And for like, and it's extremely common that I'm only going to get to a small part of them, you know, but that's fine because these marks just stay there and I'll get to them when I get to them, you know? And if you do end up erasing, what do you, how do you do that? Uh, I just take a needable eraser and I likely dab, like I'll show you now. Here we go. So that's a needable eraser. So for example, I have a problem over here with what I've done. So I'm just going to erase it. 
going to just remove. See that? That's mm -hmm. removed. No problem. And nice. I'm really having issues with this area because I can't quite locate it correctly. I think it goes down here, actually. And then this triangle is like right there, which means, see, I'm, I can really draw this shape out much better with the pencil than with the brush. I mean, all due respect to the brush, but nothing's sharper than a sharp pencil. Feels kind of good, right? Yeah, feels, <laughs> feels great. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thought so, because that's how you're going to mark your eyes. So get, get ready, because that's coming. Okay. Because, you know, doing that with a brush can be pretty intimidating. But doing it with two pencils is a lot easier. You feel that, right? Yes. Okay, so now notice I'm moving this thing. I'm checking the angle between this and this. And notice by how much I was off. That's, that's kind of a significant amount. But, you know, once I move it with the, with the charcoal, it's easy. It's going to be just a breeze to fix. So now this would be light, right? Good. So now all these corrections that I've done are making this look so much better. Like, I don't know if you remember how my painting looked before, but like moving the forehead by this much upwards, you know, that's a big move. And then moving this by that much, that's also a big move. All these things require so many colors to mix. Moving this, moving that, moving that. And now it's all moved and it feels so much more correct. And starting the day this way tells you what colors you need to mix. That's why I kind of stopped you. Because, right. you know, you were going to mix all the colors of the rainbow, which is, it's always nice to have all the colors you want to play around with. But this time, like working this way, you can say, okay, I understand everything that has to change. Now I can like be very focused on where do I start and what colors am, am I going to need in order to make these specific movements that I want to start with. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. For longer videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash kengoshen. For lessons, please visit my website at kengoshen.com slash lessons. See you next time.